So this is Kate Tempest's Hold Your Own title poem from this book called Tiresias. Picture the scene. A boy of 15 with the usual dreams and usual routine, heading to school with the dullness inside, born of desires left unsatisfied. Is he stifled or is he just learning the ways of his times? Give him limbs that are awkward but know how to climb. Give him a gate that you know, give him hopes. His days are so painfully slow, but he copes. This morning he wakes to the same old alarm, slumps in the shower like a frog in the rain, winks at the mirror, does cool, does charm, shaves, soft skin, nods at the pain, no hair yet, soon though. Headphones on, last half of last night's joint in his lips, bass so loud it feels like a movie, scuffing his trainers, swinging his hips. They're always laughing, the kids at the bus stop. He tries to ignore them, but it doesn't stop. Put up, he walks past them, blowing out smoke with the rings, singing out Wu-Tang, hating himself into the woods. He takes the old path. There is the rope swing. There is the bath line broken. There is the name in the bark. There are the trees so slim and so stark. In the thin little woodland, hardly a forest, the last of the green washed clean by the gray. There is a bike chain that nobody wanted. There's a child's shoe. Hope they're okay. Out of the damp leaves and mulch in the pathway, his eye is caught by a glittering flash, a dark moving something, a mess of bright muscle, or in a forge, a deep billowing gash. Snakes, two snakes, coiling, uncoiling, boiling, cooling, oil in a cauldron, foil in a river, soil in a mood ring, he stares. They spoil each other. They do things. He has only dreamt of doing. His blood's alive inside him, fizzing. He shuts his eyes and watches blotches underneath his lids for minutes, but peeks before he knows he's peeking. Clutching his knees, he squats on his haunches, watching the scales as they bounce and contort. And before he has thought, he has reached out a fist and picked up a short stick that lies near a ditch. He swings from above and breaks open the fortress. Two snakes now apart seem smaller, more awkward. They flee for their love. The boy swaying and nauseous falls to the floor more raw than before, more tortured. He feels himself shiver, contorting, a current is coursing within him, shorting his circuits. He curses. His curses are perfect. The trees bow their branches and worship. His body is responding to something beyond him, swells where before there were dips, a crunching of muscle, the hips opening up bones, roaring beneath him, boyhood shrinking, falling inwards, thinking nothing, feeling new blood rushing, scuffing ankles on the forest floor as his shape moves, his body pours itself to puddles, he fits and starts, he will be more than the sum of his parts, he shakes and shouts a screwed up mouth, a pain only women know, grabs him in the guts. He slows to gently stuttered breaths. He stops. He feels. He's still. He rests. And slowly, with caution, she climbs to her feet, wipes tears from her cheeks with her sleeve, frowns at the trees. How could you stay so calm? Places a nervous palm against her new face, her new chest, the new flesh of her arm. She approaches the school gates. She can't face her class. She can't go home. Not now. She is glass among sand. She turns and retreats, finds herself deep in the smog and the heat, the fog and the meat of the bodies that beat out their lives and the throb of the streets. She learns to be small and discreet. She learns to be thankful for all that she eats. She learns how to smile without meaning an inch of it. She learns how to swim in the stink and not sink in it. It's as if this is all she has known. Give her a face that is kind, that belongs to a woman you know, who is strong, and believes in the rightness of doing things wrong. Give her a body that breathes deep at night, that is warm and unending, as total as light. Let her live. Brighter every day. She was not so young and desperate. Brighter every minute, that she settled all the restless urges in her chest, and when she woke from nightmares, breathless, she would piece herself together like some relic found in ash and clay. Precious, ancient necklace. And when she was complete again, she'd wolf walk into town and drink down every wave that came to break her spirits down. She was wild, 
and wonderful, a star throughout the district, a red light dreadnought, queen among the misfits. And yes, sometimes they sneered when they glimpsed her in the gutter. It made her crack her knuckles, shake her head, and start to mutter to herself under her breath, you posh pricks don't want fucking shit. And they would look away and light their cigarettes and spit. She liked to giggle with the pretty boys and kiss the lonely addicts and weave exquisite curtains for the dismal little addicts. They lay their heads at night out of beads and string and plastic. Each corner she inhabited made warmer by her magic. She grew expert in the field of the love. Learned to see and feel the deepest secrets lurking in the hearts of those who came to swim in her dark waters. She knew things. She knew kings and she bore daughters. She knew love, made her fortune, till she met her match. Exhaustion. He was an older man who liked to hold her hand. A man who made her feel like she was rolling around on golden sand. A man as soft as any girl. A man as hard as any luck. She understood what life was for each time they bucked and came unstuck. True love takes a toll on souls who are not used to feeling whole. They tangle limbs and feel the shoulders. All the world is nothing lovers, promising each other not to take the vital parts while well, even as they mutter it, they're giving up their hearts. It is a new moon in late May. She gives way to his weight. They are laid out flat by a lake. She can feel his blood in her veins. He can feel her pulse in his wrists and they kiss. And the moon hangs open and orange like a wound in the mist. He asks her to marry him. Have him forever, and never be lonely, but only be together. She thinks he's taking a piss. Throws him a scowl so sharp his darkest parts are shattered, blasted, ripped in half. She starts to laugh. She hits her palms against the grass. He lifts his arms. I mean it. Shining cheeks, his garments creased, naked skin on cold damp heath. I mean it. Silence. Let her lay. She cannot breathe or stand. She crawls toward him, smiling, takes his hand. Of course. Their kiss and both expand. She decides she must go back. Seek out a past, a mother, a father, whatever she has, a blessing or something, maybe an answer. She packs some things and leaves at dawn, alone, and heads out north for home. By dusk, she's walking the woods of her youth, smelling the air. Is this where I'm from? Who was I when I was here last? If this isn't home, then where has it gone? She sees a small clearing between the trees. She's rocks in the river. She's leaves in the breeze. There is a shopping trolley. There are some keys. There's a hawthorn, there's a horse chestnut, there's a used condom, there's an old desk lamp, there's a nice conquer. Is that blood? Ketchup. Birds in the branches, light in the darkness, like sand on the toes of the bushes. There. Right there. There in the path and the leaves and the bracken, two black backs untangle. Dragons. Coupling, shuffling grappling. She is staggering. Can't stop looking. Strange unraveling. Something from before. Something forgotten. Someone she used to be. Some rotten something in her darkest somewhere. Scale and danger. Nature. Sun glare. Faint. She takes a branch and holds it. Steadies herself. Stills her shoulders. Snakes and sex and innocence and nothing really makes much sense. Who was I then? She watches, awed, and grips the branch like it's a sword. Believing. Believing. I should be leaving. She breaks the branch with sudden force. She swings the branch and knows its course. The snakes, no chance, are soon divorced. A sudden, dark, squelching tension. She panics. Sweats, can't breathe. Head pounds. Her body writhes and juts. No sounds. The image of her lover's face begins to shake and wilt and fade. She loses him. There, in the shade. It hurts. She's felt this once before. She knows this pain, this change, this awe, 
She feels herself retract and harden, feels her bones enlarging, moving, arching, something charging. She's old milk bursting from its carton, shaking, floored, body heaving, writhing, smiling, something pleasing. Finding her throat open, screaming, hoarse and full of light, her body stops. She feels his might, his veins thicken in intense delight. A man again. He stands, confused, and walks away. Too much to lose. This poor once boy, sudden woman who'd lived so long and done so well and kept so much so deeply hidden, now found himself before the bell of some new door in some new town. The pain of new beginnings, everything that went before gushing in him, water overfilling. <sighs> Smash the cup and let it happen. Tyree sees a full grown human moves on from what he cannot fathom. He swears his past will not consume him. And so the man with many pasts matures into his present, but he feels his water move in the last arc of the crescent, and as the moon expands to full, he feels his blood respond. But as all humans know to do, he holds it in and soldiers on. Imagine how it feels to walk so far away from life and love. To know that all you've known is now no longer enough. All the blood they bled, all the children they born, all the mouths their mouths had met behind them now. Forlorn. He staggers knee deep through his pity, sadness grabs his shins. A stranger in a stranger's city, where a new strangeness begins. In distant god terrain, Mount Olympus, pink and milky, Zeus and Hera fight again, raw and honest, foul and filthy. Hera, with her eyes screwed up, I swear you're out to kill me. She weeps and screams, and he enjoys the feeling of his power. He froths and paces, thunders, pleads, tempers frayed, their bodies need a break from fighting. But none comes. Not after this. Another tongue roasted in his, his total blaze. Surprise, surprise, old Zeus is strayed. Fighting carries on for days. Down on earth, the weather's mental. Hurricanes and ancient heat, sudden freezes, ice the deserts. Rain leaves craters in concrete, hair is ripping up her dresses. Am I not enough for you? Zeus is melted, stares intently. Sister, you are all I love. Then why? Because these others tempt me, and unlike you, I lack the guts to turn away and know my path. Hair swings straight from the cask. The nectar is strong and soothes her heart. She sighs in disbelief. Don't start. Zeus, bored of being wrong and sorry, puffs his chest up, shows his might. Hera knows his godly body well enough not to take fright. I don't know what all the fuss is for. Zeus begins playing wounded. Women like it more than men. I don't even want to do it. What you get from me is more than what I get from you. <sighs> Red rag to a minotaur. What? Says Zeus. It's true. They roll like it's a holy war. The earth suffers their anger. Finally, when neither has the strength to raise the anchor and the ship of their relations is broken keeled and sinking in their fighter, fighting over what the other might have just been thinking, they stop for ragged breaths. The sky is bruised and black hair will be pacified until he takes it back. Tiresias, at peace at last, is older now than ever. He's found a lovely partner and they've made a life together. He won't walk the woods alone. He'll only walk the heath. He blanks out all the lives he's known, but they survive beneath. He started doing pottery. He's joined the lo local choir. If he thinks about his history, his heart is set on fire. There is no way back. There is no track that leads to his past lives. He sets himself on forwards, and he loves, and he survives. His lover is a gentle man. Together they are free to enjoy each other. I love him, and he loves me. But on dark days, he likes to walk beside the heartsick sea. And as the waves begin to howl, he drops down to his knees and cries for all he lost for all he used to be. Zeus, in final stage of fury, beats his massive fists against the stormy clouds and says, there's only one who can fix this. 
Tiresias is home alone. His partner is out all day. He teaches in the local school. Good students, but shit pay. The weather's turning nasty. The house rattles and moans. The door is ripped from its hinges, and Tiresias is thrown. The house is filled with storm clouds. Rain smashes at his cheeks. He is too shocked to recognize that this is how God speaks. Suddenly the storm abates. The house is filled with sun. Zeus, in his human form, sticks up a golden thumb. Hey. Tiresias is terrified. He can barely speak. Zeus nods in recognition, swans in, and takes a seat. Look, me and Hera are having this domestic, pathetic, I know, but that's what's to be expected from an eternity of marriage anyway, you're my only hope. And Zeus takes him by the hand, might as well have been the throat, and ascends to Mount Olympus and dumps him before the queen. Here's the guy to settle it. Tiresias has been man and woman both. So ask him, who enjoys it more, a woman or a man? Tiresias is stunned, but wants to help him if he can. His mind begins to shudder. Every kiss comes back to bite him. His body buckles under the old echoes of excitement. He sees every time his open mouth is yell, all tongue and teeth. He sees the necks and backs and legs, his rising chest, his blushing cheeks. He remembers after sex, the woman he once was, lying in her happiness like nothing had been lost. He thinks of how he finds it now, spent and drained and breathing deep, the agony that follows, the desperate need for sleep. He feels it moving like a hand across his shaking thighs. He takes his time and works it out, and slowly he describes. If you could split sexual pleasure into tents, women would get nine. That leaves just one for men. Zeus grins, smug, in that way he does. And Hera feels the boiling of her blood. She, in rage and consternation, screams towards Tiresias, takes the eyes out from his head, and leaves him blind and sore and red, all boars pouring forth before them all. His arms are spread. He wishes with his broken heart he could be someone else instead. Zeus is shocked, appalled, impressed. Mate, he says. Oh, mate. Tiresias knows better than to howl and remonstrate. But his swollen eyeballs rot in grief. His face is aged with pain. Zeus, still reeling from his victory, accepts it as a shame. What one god has done, no other god can undo. I can't give you back your eyes, but I can give you something new. Zeus lays a mighty palm against the bloody sockets and floods the body's blindness with the inner side of prophets. Tiresias was melted, but inside, vision grew. A weakness in his legs, a sobbing emptiness shot through with some new tenderness, some blue. A calm uncurling in his guts. He staggered like a child, pretending blindness, hands out in the dark, but couldn't close his eyes to what exploded in his heart. He could see the truth of things. He couldn't look away. Nothing left but to accept he had been born to live this day. And so, with face streaked, war paint red, and every sense burnt white with pain, he was given seven lifetimes and dropped down to earth again. A whole life lived at the mercy of the fates. Here he comes again, the old seer with the shakes. Wheeled on to mutter prophecy, chased off by angry kings. Tiresias, you live for more than what the legend sings. Tiresias, you've lost everyone you've ever loved. But you stand beneath the cruelty of the sun that burns above and you offer only toothless grin for all that you have seen. Tiresias, you hold your own, ever you that you have been. You walk among us slow, a ragged crow, with breath to blow, in which we'll see a truth that we wish we didn't know. You're the crazy on the corner, old and smelling weird, queuing for electric with your bird board, with bird bones in your beard. You stagger on regardless, swaying in the street, Summoning an oracle that can't be ours to me. When we assemble selves online and stare into our phones, you look bright and terrifying, breath and flesh and bone. 
Tiresias, you teach us what it means to hold your own. Thank mm -hmm. you.